Yes, and welcome back to Kaltoro District, everybody. And it's mid spring. And the temperatures are the important thing at the moment. Our germination temperature, if you look up there in the HUD, is 7 degrees Celsius with an ambient teacher temperature, spit it out, of 7 degrees Celsius. But what that germination temperature means is that we are able to sow pretty much all our crops except a couple. And if we just go into the seasons menu here you can see that the ones that are white those are the ones that we are able to sow at the moment because so we can sow absolutely everything except soybeans and except corn which isn't a big problem because we're actually uh we've actually let me just fill this thing up with a bit of fuel we've been using this particular tractor and the cedar up the hill and it will get in here so you can see what's going on if you look at our map right here, these are this is field 8, 9 and 10, these green ones, and I've sown in oiled seed radish as an extra layer of fertilisation. I'm not too sure whether the effort is worth it yet, but we will find out. All the pre-prepared fields coming into this map, um, I'm going to do oil seed radish. The ones that I'm creating separately, I'm just going to go straight into normal uh, fertilisation. So those three have uh, been sown with oiled seed radish, and I now need to do 34, 38 and 51 down here bottom left. Field 37 and 43 I've ploughed, and they are now fields. And also 44, I'm just in the process of ploughing 44. So once I've ploughed 44, that will give us eight fields we can sow crops into. So I probably want to actually go and create a couple more across the road, nice and close to our silo to make life easier when we harvest them. So that's the state of the nation. Um, and this thing here has got plenty of fuel. And I'll just actually go and park this in the field over here. Like I said, we're using oil seed radish with this particular tractor and cedar at the moment. And this is the next field that we need to do right here. So I'm going to go and put this over here. We'll, I need to do the headland first. And then I'll probably let the uh, worker go ahead and finish that off. But let's just stop that tractor because I'll do that later on. Now here we are down in field number, what was it again? 44? As you can see, I've uh, managed to plough a little bit of it already. Um, there's plenty of room at the end for the tractor to turn around. So let's um, turn this tractor on. And we will let the worker take care of the rest of that. A few of those big mud puddles going on there. Anyway, one of the things that have happened since I've uh, been doing a bit of work off screen is that our silage pile over here, if you remember... It is now already good to go, which means we can go and put some power food together for our cows, which are desperately in need of. So I just need to jump into this tractor here, the New Holland, and um, I'll put the bale spike on, and then I'll go and grab the Silo King, which is the uh, total mix ration or power food mixer, and we will put together some food for our cows. Here we go there. So I'll join you guys in a minute. I'll just go and sort out this mixer. See you in a sec. Okay team, we have conveniently placed our power food mixer over there and we now need to put our total mix ration, or power food I should say, we need to put that mix together. So we're going to need two parts hay to one part straw. Now from memory these particular bales are 4,000, they are exactly the same as when you make the big rectangle bales. So I'm going to need two of these hay bales and actually if you look I've only got two more left after this one so I'm gonna to have to go ahead and do some more mowing and create a few more hay bales because they're definitely going to be important particularly as we head into I mean once we get past summer not so much of an issue but once we get into autumn and particularly winter I'm gonna need plenty of hay for not only my sheep uh, sorry not only my um, cows but also my sheep so we just work our way in here it's a little bit tight how we're we looking here really nice and close good make sure we don't take out that wooden wooden pole so yeah things have been taken along uh, quite nicely now we did have two early springs if you saw my live stream last time I had the uh, number of days for some reason a number of days per season set to nine instead of three <laughs> which was an absolute shogger um, and it meant we had an extra day of early spring. But anyway, that gave us a bit more time to do things. So it wasn't altogether bad. I did actually um, accelerate time through that day mostly. 
Um, it did mean an extra day I had to feed the animals. And um, in the seasons mod, um, particularly when you've only got three days per season, these uh, animals, they really get through the food, I tell you. Let me just go back here. Oh, well, that was blooming outstanding, wasn't it, team? We're going to have to put this down here. Look, just to give that a tap. A little bit of a tap. There we go. All right, if we just... Um, We'll just lay our, our fork down over here in the in the garage. So yeah, I, going back to the seasons, I absolutely had a shocker. But it wasn't disastrous in the end. Oh mate, come on, get the right implement here. It's only the bale fork we need to get rid of. So we'll just quickly clip on here, guys. I'll put it on the F1 menu, so that will tell us what's going on. But this should show... This won't tell us too much yet, but... At least it there we go, yeah, six. Once we throw in, as you can see, uh, the straw is in the red, but once we add a nice amount of silage, we should be good to go. Here we go. All right, look at this. It's a nice rectangle pile right here. And I'm getting absolutely nothing into it because my bucket isn't even touching the ground. Come on. Absolute professionalism as always. What's going on? Is that filling up everybody? It's nowhere near low enough. There we go. Ah, this is a small bucket I forgot. This one actually. I think this particular bucket, I think I'm going to need almost three or is it just two buckets of silage. Look. I was actually driving the other day driving up right at the northern part of New Zealand with work just uh, on Friday in fact I had to travel up into Northland and I was going through one of the uh, little towns that you have to drive through on the way up there and they had exactly that mixer right there that Silo King was for sale on the side of the road not on the side of the road it was in a farm machinery uh, shop and uh, they're actually bloody big you don't realise how big they are when you play this game, obviously uh, getting some sort of appreciation for the size of some of these implements, you don't quite get it when you play this game. But I can tell you, this thing is a decent size. A bit bigger than I thought, actually. Okay, we're just tipping half of it on the ground there. That's a top effort. Now, I'm not too sure whether this will take all of this. We'll soon know. It did took it all. I'm just going to leave that silage on the ground. From memory I think it takes just shy. I think it only takes somewhere between four and five thousand. Maybe exactly four thousand it takes. I'm not too sure. But I'm pretty sure that this final load, look at that wheel slipping big time. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be able to get this whole final bucket into the silo thing here. But yeah, that beast de decently, uh, de decently, definitely a decent size, that's for sure. Here we go. Fill it up. And as expected, we didn't fill that right up. Man, that, those wheels are just slipping. They're really struggling in the mud here. So we'll just tip this back. Just shows though we've got plenty of silage in here down at the, uh, down at the farm. I'm not going to leave this out. Usually, and if it wasn't seasons, I'd leave this out. I'm just wondering whether doing that, and it gets a bit weathered and dirty, whether that will affect the maintenance fees. I'm pretty sure that maintenance fees are affected by how dirty things are, and perhaps how leaving them outside may not help that. I'm not too sure whether that's true or not. Having said that, it's just good practice to uh, put them inside. Now, when we hook up here, guys, we should see three green bars, which the three ingredients, which will... Uh, why is that not letting me? What's going on here, guys? Am I just not straight enough? I'm not. Now we are. And there we go. Three green bars, you little ripper. So we've got a nice big load of total mix ration, as it used to be called bit power food that it's called in Farming Simulator 2018. Go past the calves there, they're not growing at all. And it'd probably be worth just throwing one more, uh, oh look these guys, they have heard the sound of the power food mixer. 
and they know that this is quality food. Now the key here guys is whether I can get this around. This is average driving but anyone who watches me know that that knows that that's standard practice for me how we're looking here we're going to miss the fence we are indeed over there i could have just backed it right in there a lot easier actually but screw it let's make it as difficult as possible right now have we got to unload there we go that is filling up and if we go into our there you are, it's filling up nicely power food and also the silage and hay obviously it's taking the silage component and adding that in there which means I'm guessing we're going to have to do another load we're definitely going to have to do another load there we go there we've managed to get power food up to 6,000 silage up to 17,000 grass is a bit of conf uh, concern because I don't have any left it definitely means I'm going to have to get out in the fields and start doing some mowing really soon and I one f you know and get the grass in there because at least get a few months in-game months that is of um, of a hundred percent productivity this is a good time to be able to get that because I've got access to all the different ingredients I'm also wondering if anybody knows for sure if grass can be stored in uh under in, in sheds and all that stuff and whether it will last during the winter i know the other the hay and straw definitely does anyway guys let's uh how uh how are we looking okay we need to do some straw so we'll do that and then we'll quickly go and um because I'm, I'm gonna have to do some um gonna have to do some straw uh, sorry some uh, hay very soon so i'm just going to leave this power food mixer right here because i'm going to have to do that on today's date but let's just grab this um bale fork now someone left a bit of a cryptic message saying just store the hay bales in the feeding trough i think they said which i kind of see what they're saying they're saying it's just loaded up and then it will just as they need it it will just uh, so you know put five or six just sitting in the trough and then as the cows need it it will just be fed into the trough as it empties the only problem with that to whoever who wrote that look at this as I completely screw things up there the only thing with that in seasons from what I understand is that if those are those bales are sitting there exposed in the winter then they are going to rot basically oh mace what are you doing wrong way they're going to rot so it's definitely not something that I, I want to have in there. They're going to fall over. Um, so I don't think... I, I, during the summer I could probably do that. I could just load up the uh, feeding troughs over here, overfill them, and then you know, as they empty, the, the, the stuff sitting on top will automatically fall in. But um, during the winter I think that's going to be problematic. And it's not very realistic anyway. Not that I do things ultra-realistic, but I like to keep it to a certain level. There we go. Let's have a look here. Okay, straw's good. Okay, water's good. Cleanliness is fine. Really just need some grass and probably another load of power food. But what that's going to mean is um, I'm going to have to go up to the other farm and get some more hay because the, sh the sheep have got plenty of hay, so I'll do that. Anyway, guys, what we'll do is we'll go and park this tractor up and then let's get the all seed radish under control. It's good to get some power food in there, that's for sure. Should really clean up that bloody silage here. I can't be bothered though. Too lazy. Man, did they get through the hay? Jesus. Look at that. Expert banking. That's one time in a row that I've done it well. Shut oh hold on. Let's put this on the ground, take the weight off. Right. Alright guys. How are we looking for time? It's probably getting close to needing to uh, uh, finish off this particular episode. We'll just check our guy. He's uh, merely... He's not doing a very good job. Look at all that, those patches that he's missed. My OCD is kicking in. I'm going to have to go and fix those up later. But let's just get into our uh, sower here. So this particular field here... Let's turn it on. Let's lower that down. Let's turn it on. This is one of the field... Oh, mace. Oh, man. That's a shocker. Um, this is one of the fields that come pre-prepared with the map. Which is uh, all good. 
So I'm just going to, as I said, all the pre-prepared. So there's six fields. All the fields that are pre-prepared. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ab Absolute shocker. The ones that have pre-prepared, I'm going to sow in oilseed radish. Which, oh yeah, like I say, I thought I was going to get two stages of fertilizing out of planting oilseed radish. I know that cultivating it into the soil part of the process is definitely, uh, definitely counts as a fertilization but I thought there was one other part of it that counts also when I read about it because I haven't really done much of it but so far I've only experienced uh, one one stage uh, no stages of fertilizing I've got it planted I'm just wondering whether when it gets to the first stage of growth whether that's where it's going to uh, whether that's where it's going to get the first level of fertilizing and then the second level is when it's cultivated in I'm not 100% sure, but this is we'll try things out. I'm sure there'll be some help on the internet if I was really desperate to get it. I'll just get that out of the road. So anyway, guys, there we go. We are ticking along really nicely at Tautoro District. Plenty of time. We're in mid-spring. We've still got a few months to... Uh, I'll just stop that there because what I'll show you is... Let's look at the forecast. Uh, tomorrow's not looking good at all. Um, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday as we get into the gut. So tomorrow's going to be late spring. Then Thursday, Friday and Saturday are all summer where we will need to do some harvesting potentially um, and into autumn as well which uh, looks a little bit dodgy for a start. I know this first part of autumn you can harvest. So it's going to be a bit tricky it looks like at times. We're just going to have to make sure we time this correctly but I'm looking to have t at least 10 fields all sewn up and with crops ready to go to harvest but maybe might do more than that depending on how much time I've got. I've got a few plans for during autumn and winter where perhaps we haven't got as much to do. I'm probably going to go ahead and do some forestry up at the back there, so plenty on the go. But this tractor's uh, doing a good job here, revving up the hill. Good stuff. See, everything has come together quite nicely, guys. So I want to say a huge thanks very much for tuning in. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. It costs nothing at all, except a little bit of self-respect. And guys, until next time, take it easy.